Uh, we can talk to the Housing Secretary, Michael Gove. Michael Gove, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us um, Hi, here on Breakfast. Um, got lots to talk to you about. Can we start, first of all, um, with this story um, about a second candidate being looked into um, regarding bets on the timing of the election? What impression do you think this gives of what's go this gives of those involved with the Conservatives? Well, it's deeply regrettable if anyone uh, has been speculating, betting um, on the result of the election on the basis of inside information. But at the moment, we've got a, uh, an investigation, a process going on, um, I think led by the Gambling Commission. Um, and so we'll have to wait to see what they conclude. Uh, but it's, um, uh, it's certainly, uh, you know, pretty... What's the word? Um, you know, disappointing, I think, at least, behaviour. Did you know that the general election would be taking place on the 4th of July, sometime before it was announced? Uh, no, you could have knocked me down with a feather. Really? OK, that's interesting. But then there were other people in the, who were, you know, amongst Conservatives who, did, who were making bets, seemingly, because of um, information they may have. Does that surprise yeah. you? Uh, yes, and, and, and I think there's a, a, a third case I am, uh, of someone who's not involved with the uh, Conservative Party as well, but who may, may have been privy to that information. Um, I used to be a, a minister in the Ministry of Justice a wee while ago, um, and one of the things I learned then is that it's difficult for politicians to provide a running commentary when you've got investigations like this going on. Obviously, it's a matter of public concern and interest. If people have used inside information to place bets, that is deeply wrong. But what I can't do is sort of uh, get too much into the detail of the case while an investigation is going on. But I can talk about the broad principle, and you're absolutely right, it's reprehensible. Um, I'm looking at the front page of The Telegraph this morning. A very simple headline, Tory wipeout. Now, look, we know that the most important poll is what will happen on July 4th when the electorate go goes to vote. But you must, I mean, you are, you're aware of all these polls that are coming through. You know, when you see a headline like that on the Daily Telegraph, a Conservative-leaning paper, a Tory wipeout, what does that make you think? Well, several things. Um, I mean, the first thing is that uh, uh, the, the, this is not the view of the Daily Telegraph. It's a, uh, a poll conducted by a reputable polling company, um, you know, with, you know, all the sort of methodologies and data put through uh, the system. Um, the second thing is, of course, politicians look at polls, but the, the choice at this election is not between the Telegraph's uh, Savanta poll and someone else's YouGov poll. The choice is between Keir Starmer and, and Rishi Sunak. They're the only two people who can be Prime Minister. So there's an obligation on me as a Conservative to explain why I think uh, Rishi would be the right candidate. And that takes me to the third point, um, which is uh, uh, there's... There are two key things that I think that people are crystallising in their mind as they, as they look at front pages like that. One is, well, if Labour do win, what will that mean for me in terms of taxation? And taxes will rise faster and more under Labour than under the Conservatives. And then the second thing, if people look at a, a front page like that, is they'll think, what would Labour do if they had a, a majority as big as that? Uh, you know, will we have a strong questioning opposition? And might Labour be tempted to use that massive majority to rig the system, to extend votes to 16-year-olds, to prisoners, to EU citizens and to others in a way designed to entrench a sort of forever rule? So uh, those are my reactions. And you're making an assumption that 16, 17-year-olds, prisoners or whatever would vote Labour, are you? Well, again, my concern is that Labour would use whatever tools they have, uh, if, they, if they have that sort of level of unchecked power in the Commons, to entrench it. I think there are a number of other things uh, that they would seek to do as well in order to, you know, for example, uh, make sure that uh, many of the public bodies that, uh, that we all rely on uh, to help to run our lives, instead of having a, a balance of people from across the political spectrum with real skills uh, that will help, that I think there may be a tendency for them to put uh, people who will be yes men and women in. Now, mm. uh, uh, you know? that, that, is, that is certainly a concern that I've heard from uh, uh, voters in some of the conversations that I've had. And I do think that it is a, a factor. But at this stage, uh, with two weeks to go, I want to make sure that we're looking at the policies that both sides mm. are putting forward. I'm... And for example, on housing, the area that I'm responsible for, I believe that our record of housing delivery 
but also the policies that we're bringing forward in the future will mean that more people will be able to get on the housing ladder under the Conservatives than under Labour. I'm listening to you um, closely and I'm listening to kind of the tone of what you're saying in terms of uh, concerns, your concerns about Labour having a significant majority if it wins the election. To me, it sounds like you've conceded defeat. No, I don't concede defeat until the uh, the whistle finally blows. So, uh, you so can do be... you think there is a possibility that the Conservatives will win? A, a good possibility, there's always a possibility, but a good possibility that the Conservatives will be back in government on July the 5th? Never say die. Um, you've got to fight until the, uh, the final moment. Uh, you've got to keep playing until the final whistle. Um, and that is um, the, the philosophy that I take. And, and again, you know, uh, it's entirely understandable that people should speculate about what might happen afterwards, and that thought is in people's minds. But while you're in the election, it, there's a sort of, I think, a democratic responsibility and duty on the part of politicians to put forward ideas about how the country would be better governed and to debate some of the, the difficult choices that we've had to make in the past um, and to invite people to reflect on, uh, for example, the gains that we've made in education. These were uh, uh, real gains in improving school standards. Uh, they were fought tooth and nail by Labour. There are schools today that are sending children from uh, very poor backgrounds to our top universities. These schools didn't exist before the Conservatives were in government. And having a conversation about the future for young people and what should happen in our schools is, I think, just as, if not more yeah. important, Can... than, you know, speculating on, on the polls. Michael uh, Again, you know, it's a broad conversation. I understand why people will talk about, about the polls and no one Michael should Gale. ever seek to police or censor conversations, but I just want to broaden it. I'd like to take uh, the last couple of minutes I have with you um, to hear your reflections. Um, you are levelling up Minister, uh, um, Secretary, and um, I just wonder if you think you've levelled up, because I'm looking at, you know, the Public Accounts Committee, which found only 10% of funded promises had been spent by March 2024. There was a promise to level up. Do you think you've succeeded? Yeah, I think that we've uh, made progress. I don't think we've gone as far as uh, we need to. But then when we published our prospectus Do you think you've made levelling... satisfactory progress? Yes, a good progress, actually. So when we published our prospectus on what, what we needed to do, we made it clear that it would take until at least 2030 in order to deliver. But if you look at, uh, for example, devolution, strengthening the hand of local communities. Uh, we've had the biggest change in the way in which England has been governed, the biggest level of devolution, power going down to the people uh, for more than 100 years. And if you look at what the Conservatives have done, for example, in Teesside, uh, you know, come with me, visit the constituency that uh, uh, Simon Clark MP is uh, fighting, see the difference that he has made working with the Teesside Mayor Ben Houchen, and I would defy anyone to say that that isn't levelling up. Um, uh, if you look at urban regeneration in Blackpool, if you look at the okay. uh, investment that we've made in renewables energy in Blythe, so you if seem you look to be... at the way in which we've transformed uh, Greater Grimsby, then in all of these areas, and I could go on, but I won't, don't, don't want to sort of, you know, hog the camera, as it were, there has been real progress towards levelling up. Um, you are one of 75 former Conservative MPs choosing not to stand again in this election. And you are one of the few MPs who've been in government since the start of the Conservative government. Just your reflections now. Do you, are you satisfied with where the Conservatives are now, 14 years on? Do you think you've done a good job? Well, I think there's a song in Hamilton, isn't there, about uh, never being completely satisfied. Um, and I think that's true uh, not just about American revolutionary politics, but all politics. But what I am is proud of the achievements that we've made in education uh, and in our schools, proud of how we've improved the environment with uh, effective decarbonisation and enhancement of nature, proud of what we've done to extend childcare, proud of the record of innovation, proud of what we've been doing in science and technology, proud of the fact that we've got inflation back down to 2%. Proud of yourself? Proud of the are you fastest proud of vaccine your person, rollout. Are you proud, proud of, of your personal... For Ukraine. Are you proud of your personal performance? Um, well, one of the things that I changed in education is the idea that you should mark your own homework. Um, uh, my view is that other people will judge. Michael Gove, Secretary for Leveling Up Housing and Communities, thanks very much for joining us here on BBC Breakfast. Thank you, Nada, thank you.